So, welcome back to the workshop. Well, actually, we're not in the workshop, we're in the garden because this is part two of the timber store build. If you missed part one, that's where we made this lovely framework out of pine and I'll link to that video in the description down below if you're interested. We got quite a lot done in the first two days and in this video we're going to be working on the plywood facing on the inside and the outside, adding the waterproof flashing along the bottom and also making the roof overhang. So I just want to thank Latham Timber for supplying the plywood and the cladding for the timber store. I used two different types of plywood for this build. The inside facing plywood is just standard 18mm plywood. And I wanted to add plywood facing to the inside of the timber store because I'm going to be adding a lot of stuff on the walls like timber racks and pretty much anything I want to add is going to be very easy now because I can just screw directly into the plywood. And on the outside of the timber store I lined the whole outside with Garnica Duraply. Now if you haven't heard of Garnica Duraply and you're aware of marine ply then uh, I'm about to change your life. Because if you like marine ply, Duraply is amazing. It's insect attack and fungus resistant. It's got a 15 year guarantee outside. It doesn't need any finish on it and it won't delaminate. It's pretty amazing. So technically you could make the whole shed in the garden out of Garnica Duraply. It's great for pretty much all woodworking and it really shines obviously outside with those properties. So it's good for garden furniture. So what I'm doing is I'm using the track saw to rip the plywood sheets to the right height and then I'm using the jigsaw to cut notches at the top so then the roof beams can slot through them. And once it's sitting nicely against the framework, I'm just screwing it directly into it. Before I added the plywood facing, there was a bit of wobble to the timber stall because it was literally just the, the pine framing. So it wasn't that stable, but as soon as I added the plywood facing, the whole timber store came together and it was very rigid and solid and there was no shifting it at all. So as you can see when I'm attaching the plywood, the pine walls were actually screwed into the fence posts to the inside corner, so there was an offset there. So when I add the plywood facing and then the cladding, it should end up flush with the fence posts. So as you can see there, I cut the door out of the plywood sheet and I'm actually going to make the door last because I want to know the exact thickness of the wall with the cladding on and then I'm going to add a lining around the door frame so then I have a nice surface to mount the hinges to. So if you're going to build this outdoor space for yourself as maybe a home workshop then now would be a good opportunity to put some insulation in the walls but because I'm just using it to store wood then I don't need to do that. And as you can see, because the roof is not on, there's quite a lot of light inside the timber store. So when the roof is on, I'm going to need to buy some battery powered lights that I can attach to the ceiling because I won't be running mains power to the timber store. So the lighting in there will have to be uh, battery powered. If any of you have any recommendations for lighting I can use in the timber store, then I'd love to hear it in the comments down below because I'm still undecided on that. And here is the final panel going up. It was really nice to see all the panels finally up because it took quite a long time, especially doing all the measuring, marking out where the notches need to be cut out for the beams, but also where the framing is behind the panel so then I knew where to screw. Also, if any of you have any good ideas for timber storage solutions or interest in organisation tips for storing large sheet materials and boards, then I'd also love to hear that in the comments because I want to be able to store as much in here as possible but also make each piece easily accessible and easy to take wood in and out the timber store. So now it's time to make the roof overhangs. So as you can see at the front and the back of the workshop the roof beams are already overhanging and they're overhanging about 20 centimeters and I want that overhang to be consistent around the whole timber store. So now on the left and right side, I'm cutting notches out the plywood with the jigsaw and then adding some two by four pieces into those notches and I'm just screwing them directly into the first beam of the roof. Now the overhang on the left and right of the timber store, I'm gonna screw a two by four directly into those supports but on the front and back, I'm gonna cut strips of plywood and screw that to the protruding beams. And that's because some of them are slightly different lengths to the other. So using a strip of plywood will allow me to flex that into position. 
So as you can see, it was just me working on the timber store that day, so I added some supporting pieces to help hold the beam up while I screwed it in place. And that is the left and right side overhang complete, and before I screw in the plywood overhang to the front and back, I need to add some vents. Now it's very important to add vents at the top of your timber store or shed, because in very hot weather, there'll be a lot of warm air inside the shed, and that will cause condensation and the roof can start to get mouldy. So you need a way for the hot air to come out and expel through the shed. So I'm adding vents all along the roof and I'm using a Bosch 70mm hole saw and I just bought some soffit vents from Screwfix but you can get them from Amazon. So now I'm cutting some strips of plywood to use as the front and back overhang. Now you'll notice I'm using a circular saw for this application and that is because it's a lot quicker than a plunge saw. Because I'm making parallel cuts, all I need to do is set the fence once and then I can ride that along the edge of the plywood sheet and then just cut consistent lengths. So if I was using a track saw, I would need to measure an offset from the edge of the plywood and make sure the track is perfectly parallel and then move the track long because the track's not long enough for a full sheet of plywood. So it would be a much longer process setting up the track instead of just using a circular saw with a fence on it. So here you can see why it was a good idea adding a plywood overhang here. And that's because some of the beams were slightly different lengths than the other, so the plywood can be screwed and flexed into position. I also doubled up the plywood so it was the thickness as the beams on the left and right side. So now it's time to waterproof the bottom of the timber store. So I'm adding some flash band, which is a waterproof banding. I'm not sure exactly what it's made of, but it's great for roofing and applications like this. It has got an adhesive on the back of the strip, but when you're attaching it to a porous material, it is recommended to use some primer first. So that's what this black paint is, and that creates a flat, non-porous surface that I can attach the flash band to. And if there is any sort of dirt on the surface, this primer seals it in place. So I added this flash band all around the timber store, including the corners, because I don't want any water seeping underneath. So that is the end of part two. I hope you're enjoying the Timber Store series so far. In part three, we're gonna be putting on all the cladding and attaching the roof, which is really exciting. And I hope you're looking forward to that part. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. If you're enjoying the series, make sure you give it a like and comment down below. And if you wanna support the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you share this video with your friends or become a patron, where you get a lot of perks like exclusive content and early releases. And I also want to take this time to thank all my patrons for making this video possible. So thank you for sticking to the end of the video and I'll see you very soon for part three. Bye.